Hi guys, how are you? My name is Swan Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. If you're interested in learning Real Macro Economics and Investing, come down to Patreon.com slash Real Macro and I'll be more than happy to uh, uh, to mentor you. So, I want to make this video and I'm, I'm calling this the uh, Savings Bubble, the MMT Savings Bubble Snap. The Snap Moment. Um... This, this is a very difficult video to make only because I, I know that most people don't understand a lot of these things I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to try to explain it uh, in, on, a, on a basic level and then at the same time tell you what the implications of those uh, of everything is, okay, of, of what I explained. So the first thing that um, you must understand is that... Um, when a government def deficit spends, okay, it issues a bond, and that bond is is backed by the national wealth, okay. So, the national wealth is what values, okay, a bond. Okay, that's these. This is how it, we can deficit spend and pay for things. This is the reality, okay. Uh, quick way to prove it. Do you want to go buy today a bond from Venezuela, Argentina, Turkey? Do you want to go buy them? No, because they have trashed their currency to the point where um, the national wealth has been exhausted. You're not acquiring anything from that nation's economy. All right. So. Uh, it's the same um, uh, in all governments, in all nations, in all economies that trash their currency where they uh, print in excess. Okay? It's always going to be the same. And that trashing of the currency is what leads to uh, a government to borrow or, a pri or an economy to borrow in a, in a foreign currency because the currency that they have is worthless. So the only way they can maintain a value is to have uh, uh, an exchange in a foreign currency, foreign debt as they call it. And then when those foreign <coughs> debt obligations cannot be met because there's this ins insufficient amount of foreign currency reserves, then you have the second snap moment and everything collapses okay it just it becomes a fucking disaster area now mmt does you know word fuckery marketing and they always put the cart ahead of the horse and they'll tell you well it's because they um, uh, these governments uh, borrowed in a foreign currency and that's why they are hyperinflating no it is because they first trashed the currency then they borrowed okay so uh, that's that's again cart ahead of the uh, horse. All right. Now, um, what we have seen in the U.S. is the socialist push. We want free this, free that, free that, free that, free that, free, 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 and that's just fantasies. Okay, and that's what MMT pushes. The prescription pushes this fantasy. In an MMT world, in an MMT world, and in an MMT world, we can eliminate bonds with, by eliminating bonds. We eliminate the debt. And somehow, those dollars that were in bonds are now liquefied, okay? So, let's talk about that. As I told you, that a bond represents the national wealth, okay? And when you use a bond to issue, and then the, the savers are the ones that, f that give the dollars to the government so they can go out and spend into the productive economy and then when it goes around the productive economy those dollars become fully valued and then through the this savings mechanism right uh, profit for the uh, top uh, five percent for the companies because you cannot have profits without the savings it's just not possible okay so household the 95 percent must dissave they have to do it in order for profit to exist, okay? And then those profits go to savings, and then those savings are owned by the 5%, and then the 5% take those dollar savings, and they go out and buy a bond, 
and they own more of the national wealth and they also get a nice little interest for for buying those those bonds typically not today but you know they get a nice little interest for that and then that interest payment bypasses the functional economy and ends up back into savings and this is another fuckery word that Mosler uses it's interest income see <coughs> sorry about that uh, interest income income implies that it will be spent it's not interest income savers do not go out and spend their savings that's why they're savers right so it's interest savings interest savings to the savers that's what an interest payment is okay interest savings to savers they don't go out and spend that okay um, so not only does the savings bubble get to uh, acquire uh, more of the national wealth they're also going to get an interest payment okay uh, for their savings so just to recap a bond is uh, ownership of the national wealth that's what a bond is right national wealth all right they acquire it the five percent acquired it in exchange they give their dollars they acquire those bonds and an interest payment and then those dollars that are in savings are now funneled back into the 95 percent into the productive economy they value the currency they do whatever they need to do and then those dollars this save are this saved okay and they become profit and then the profit would become savings to the five percent and then those dollars and savings go into asset prices like bonds okay they go into stocks commodities and real estate as well so the feedback loop goes like this this is the way it goes right now and this has been going on for a very very long time now when the economy is healthy what's going to happen is that productivity is going to increase the national wealth and the, even though there will be nominally more and more and more of the national wealth handed over to the five percent okay um, then at that point it's not going to really matter it's not going to matter because productivity is growing at a faster rate than debt to GDP okay and a faster rate so when Natasha Kelton and Mosler are telling you oh yeah we can pay for everything we can pay for everything we can pay for it yeah the only way you can pay for it is if you borrow from the uh, national wealth and that's why MMT does not work anywhere else in the world. For example, they cannot go to Haiti and say, "Hey, check it out. You know, you got a you got a, a unemployment problem? No problem. Go issue some bonds and uh, deficit spend that into the economy, and then you'll create jobs, and you can have free health care, free job guarantee with no skills required for anybody. Just let them show up, and you give them a a job for thirty-five thousand, full medical and health, free college, uh, free." Uh, uh, uh whatever the fuck you know healthcare and free uh uh college and uh, w what's it, some other thing they want a uh, green new deal and you can make uh, haiti green and whatever they can't do it why because <laughs> haiti is a disaster area they have liquefied all their national wealth and if they issue more bonds the only thing they're going to do is just destroy their currency even more okay and uh what's the point of that right so there's there's no point in that, and that's why it doesn't work anywhere else in the world. Okay, it doesn't work. MMT doesn't work. If it doesn't work in Haiti, it's not going to work in the U.S. It's not going to work anywhere. It's going to appear that it can work in the U.S. only because we have such a large, large national wealth. So all those who say, well, in an MMT world, we don't have to have debt. Okay, well, how are you going to not have debt? How is that going? How is that possible? Well, this is the this is what they come up with. It's word fuckery again. Well, we'll just eliminate the bonds, okay? We'll run QE, okay? And then if we don't have bonds, then we can have debt. So what is QE? What is QE? QE, what it does is the central bank, instead of issuing bonds, is now going to buy bonds. It's going to do the reverse. It's going to buy bonds, okay? It's going to buy bonds, and it's going to convert those bonds into dollars. And then those dollars are going to go not into the productive economy they won't those dollars are going to go into the unproductive economy back into savers okay 
and that's the way that works so it's technically it's unprinting of dollars of bonds okay it's unprinting bonds but the dollars remain if you have a million dollar bond that that you own in the savings bubble what you're going to do is you're going to give it back to the government and then the government is going to give you cash for it okay so what have you done you have liquefied the bonds that's all you've done the debt doesn't go away because the dollars still exist in the world so right now for example we have 22 trillion dollars of public debt okay four trillion of that is on the central bank's balance sheet well that four trillion dollars exists in the savings bubble it hasn't gone away it hasn't gone away okay they've liquefied it they created new dollars and exchanged them uh, for bonds and the, the bonds went to the government and then the government gave them cash and now there's more cash in the world what if you did that for 22 trillion well then what well now you're gonna have 22 trillion dollars that used to be bonds and then you eliminate the bond okay but you will have 22 trillion more in the savings uh, bubble that is in liquid form okay so one more time when you issue a bond you are issuing um, ownership of the national wealth when you run QE you liquefy a bond and you convert it to dollars okay and then those dollars bypass the functional economy they go into savings so now there's there's an MMT world there's 22 trillion more dollars in the world and then those savings those savings go into asset prices and these asset prices without a bond market okay because they've eliminated it and there's no more interest okay so that's gone so now all you have is stocks commodities and real estate that 22 trillion dollars is going to flow into those asset classes and create inflation so that's the way it works now there is a snap moment that's happening right now it's just snapping what is this snapping that I'm talking about the snap moment is that we are watching worldwide almost every day uh, interest rates go into negative territory 1 trillion 2 trillion 4 trillion 8 trillion 16 trillion into negative territory so uh, we are now at 16 trillion of negative territory okay and we also have 30 trillion that cannot even meet uh, inflation targets of that of those economies okay and uh, why is this happening why is this happening well it's happening because there is excessive amount of dollars in the uh, in the world economy there's just way too many dollars yen euro whatever in the world and then those dollars like a uh, water uh, in a bucket uh, have to go somewhere and the MMT crowd again tells you bullshit that we can just you know print 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 or pump more and more water into the bucket and then it's not going to overflow and if it does overflow well we're gonna we recognize that we could we recognize the constraint okay that's what they'll tell you but the problem is they don't they can't do anything about it and I'll explain later why they cannot do anything about it when it when it comes because that's gonna be the second snap moment okay so we're in the first snap moment the first snap moment is that you are seeing that the bond market uh, is actually paying now central banks to hold their money think about that that's that's insane right and 30 <coughs> sorry 30 trillion can't even meet uh, uh, cannot even meet the inflation targets that's that's kind of nuts so the law of supply and demand when you have too much supply of dollars and not enough bonds then you're going to get uh, bond appreciation okay so now we're, we're watching that uh, the stock market has gone from about 87 trillion dollars down to 75 trillion dollars that's what it's come down to and those dollars now are fleeing from the stock market and going into the bond market all right 
And that's what's happening right now. And we're all sitting here like, oh, selfie time. And what you're seeing is that you're getting that asset price inflation. Okay, It's growing exponentially. And that is causing uh, interest rates to fall. The economy is slowly grinding lower and lower. Inflation is falling lower and lower. And you have uh, a yield curve that used to be um, um, profitable for banks, okay, because they borrow on the short end and they lend on the long end. And this is their profit margin right in here. And now that you have a flat uh, yield curve in a lot of places around the world and even negative, well, it's not very profitable. So they're not going to uh, lend. And if they don't lend, then what ends up happening is you're starving the functional economy of dollars. Um, and, uh, uh, and when that happens, it creates fear. And then those dollars be, save even more. And the more they save, the more you start with the productive economy and you end up in a very bad situation. Now you're going to tell me that, well, we've had an inverted yield curves with much, much higher interest rates. Yes, I agree. Of course it is. And it's different this time because we're paying interest on reserves. We are increasing deficits. It is different. That's not the point. The point is that these excessive dollar savings are, um, are, are going into all these asset classes and it's creating not more productivity, not more inflation, the complete opposite. It's a grind lower and lower and lower. So what is the solution that the government is going to try to do? Well, they're going to uh, come up with a stimulus package. They're going to come up with a um, deficit package. The auto stabilizers are going to increase deficits and uh, they're going to run more QE. Okay, they're going to lower interest rates which is exactly what they shouldn't do because all of this uh, new money creation is going to create more asset price inflation, more negative yields, uh, less money in the productive economy, slower growth, slower economic, uh, I'm sorry, slower uh, inflation, and it's adding jet fuel to the economy that is headed in the wrong direction, okay? It's headed in the wrong direction. It's it's heading towards an MMT world that they all think like, you know, they, they, they come up with a nice little spreadsheet and they're like, yeah, everything equals to zero. Don't worry about it. We can do this. We can do that. So the cause of the problem um, is the solution to the problem uh, as to what they're telling you. That because the economy is slowing, even though we have asset price inflation that's going on right now, okay, too much savings, and I've been warning about this forever, because the economy is slowing, what they have to do is increase deficits, lower interest rates, increase uh, stimulus packages, automatic stabilizers to, to try to maintain this from, from descending, but you're feeding the savings bubble even more and more and more. This is problematic because you're not fixing the problem. So uh, let's go back and uh, remote one. Let me show you, um, where is it? All right, so here we are. So we're back here now. All right, so um, when the more and more that the government deficit spends, the more bonds they issue, the more that they are um, um, borrowing from the national wealth. When the productive economy cannot keep up with the amount of deficit spending, Okay, it's not producing the same kind of at, at least one dollar of GDP for every one dollar of deficit spending or borrowing from the national wealth. Okay, then you end up in a very bad place. And then if your solution is, well, I'm just going to pump even more dollars by now liquefying the bonds into, into dollars, like I said before, then, all, uh, you know, you're not going to increase the amount of dollars in the savings bubble, I'm, I'm sorry, in the productive economy, in part one of two uh, uh, sectors within the private sector, right? So it's going to bypass private one, and it's going to go right into savings. And then those savings are going to go into uh, uh, asset prices. And then you're saying, well, there's no inflation. Look, MMT is perfect. It's working wonderful. Wonderful, I tell you. Wonderful. We are going to an MMT world. Yes, yes. No. No, because you're not you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. 
you're pushing down interest rates long on the short end banks are not going to be profitable you're increasing the debt to national wealth debt to gdp uh the this savings continues it becomes private uh, profits and savings and then those dollars keep buying more and more of those bonds so it, it's just more of the same and as we've experienced yes we've had uh, 10 years without a recession but um, we haven't had uh, crazy growth right and um, this constant deficit spending and QE uh, all the time trying to keep everything alive has led us to where we are today where you have more and more dollars going into negative uh, territory and that is a snap moment that's a snap moment so what MMT wants to do okay fantasy MMT in the MMT world is they want to play word fuckery because that's what they're good at they love word fuckery they want to eliminate the bonds run qe for 22 trillion dollars okay they want to run for qe for 22 trillion dollars stop calling it debt convert all the bonds over to dollars give it to the savers now you're going to have an additional 22 trillion in here okay and then the government is just going to create dollars out of thin air and keep pumping into the uh, productive economy, which is then going to be the safe supply uh, demand side economics, right? Uh, you're going to have a job guarantee paying you $36,000 and you're just going to peel gum off the ground or plant flowers for the public purpose because these words are, you know, they fire neurons off in people's heads and they think, oh my God, this is wonderful. We're going to have a third class uh, citizen cleaning my fucking pavement, this, uh, my sidewalk. I love it. But it's never them. Anyway, then they're going to save all those dollars printed out of thin air. They'll go to profit and savings. They save profit savings. Deficit spend, they save profit savings. Deficit spend, they save profit savings. And what happens to all those dollars? Well, they're going to asset prices. But now you don't have the bond market, so screw that. So again, stocks, commodities, and real estate are going to start to go uh, higher and higher and higher until they're done going higher and higher and higher because it's going to reach some predetermined level of uh, dollar creation to national wealth and then at that point goodbye the 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 five percent are going to take their money uh and run those liquefied uh dollars that that um, uh, represent the national wealth they're going to go to greener pastures and then you're fucked because MMT loves to say government debt equals private sector assets. Government debt equals private sector assets. Government debt equals private sector assets. Yes, for the top 5%. For the top 5%. Not for the 95%. You understand? And that's why they omit these two sectoral balances within the private sector. The reality is this. That the government has the right to liquefy the national wealth. They have that right, okay? And um, what they what they do with those dollars is pump them into the productive economy. They saves profit savings. All right. So government debt equals private sector assets. Yes, because all money flows to the savings bubble, the top 5%. Okay? And the liability of those assets, of that debt, I'm sorry, of that debt, the liability goes with the productive economy of the private sector, private one. While the unproductive economy uh, of the private sector gets all the assets. So right there, you can see that, well, that's not very good for MMT for more deficits, right? That's a disaster for them. So they, they don't like to, to separate it. So they say, okay, you know what? Let's just clump them all together and just say, Government debt equals private sector assets. And that's it. Government debt equals private sector assets. And we'll just include the 95 with the assets, even though they're not going to get any of it. And they never have. That's why we're $22 trillion into this. And the 95% are not stuck with savings bonds, right? Instead, they are stuck with the liability. 
they're stuck with the liability. And then once that predetermined level, wherever that is, of national wealth has been reached and the savers no longer want to hold those dollars, they will sell those dollars back to government and convert them into whatever other currency they want, euro, I don't know, yuan, whatever, chef, I don't know what the hell they're going to do with it, Canadian dollar, whatever. And then um, you're going to see bond prices uh, suddenly uh, collapse. You're going to see interest rates spike. And then you're going to see the currency collapse. Okay, that's the way that works. And the 95% are going to be stuck with the liability. Only now they've, they've converted all their national wealth into dollars that have fled and you end up with a situation that is not very desirable okay now let me be clear this is not something that i'm talking about is going to happen next week next month six months from now a year from now even 10 years from now maybe 30 years from now i don't know when it's going to happen i have no clue um this video is not for you to go out and say oh my god you know hyperinflation buy gold buy silver it's not the point of this video the point of this video is to make you aware that we have the first snap moment and the first snap moment is that all those saving uh, bubble dollars are flowing into bonds who are willing to pay central banks negative interest rates to hold which is forcing interest rates to go negative and for yield curves to go flat to invert it and as interest rates go flat to invert it asset bubbles are not uh, asset inflation uh, is going every which way we have more than sufficient amount of uh, dollars in the world 250 in total 250 trillion in total you have idiots like mosler coming out and saying oh we have a cash famine we have a cash famine we have a cash famine you cannot have a cash famine <laughs> if you had a cash famine my friend you would not have negative interest rates okay there wouldn't be sufficient amount of dollars to go and push rates to negative yields. It just wouldn't happen. And that's why you're seeing the productive economy slow. You're watching asset prices skyrocket. You're watching inflation slow. Okay. You're watching um, yields drop. And you're hearing that the governments are now going to lower interest rates uh, even more in the central banks. They're going to come up with stimulus packages. They're going to come up with uh, more deficits. And they're going to come up with more QE to do more of the same that got us here to begin with. Okay. This is the, oh, in an MMT world, we're going to have all these free things. Mm -mm -mm. So wonderful. That's the reality. This is a snap moment, okay? And I'm not saying that this is not going to reverse at some point and we'll go back to normal and continue higher. In fact, I am still net bullish the stock market and the economy, okay? This is a sideways market for now. Uh, but what I am telling you is that as this continues in the direction that we are going, eventually we're going to hit the second snap moment, and the second snap moment, you're going to go from negative interest rates to skyrocketing interest rates. Okay. And then the fun is going to begin because the currency will start to uh, crack. You're going to see that we're going to hit a recession. And then by according to MMT, the way they're going to deal with it is they're going to increase taxes, cut uh, deficits, okay, cut spending, and they're going to increase interest rates. Yeah, right in your fucking fantasy world that would never happen that would never happen because automatic stabilizers are going to increase deficits okay not decrease them you're going to have roaring inflation and then you're screwed you can increase all the taxes and you're going to end up like greece believe me that's the way it ends uh now it doesn't mean that we cannot you know take steps to change this of course we can we can create an ecosystem feedback loop within the private sector and this is the way the pure mmt way deals with it where you eliminate or greatly reduce deficits okay 
really reduce that. And then you have incentive programs where the savings turns into investment that creates income, their savings, profit, savings, and then that becomes, uh, once again, um, investment, uh, income, the savings, profit, savings, and then back into invest and, and keep doing that. And when you do this, an ecosystem feedback loop between private sector one and private sector two, when this occurs, guess what happens to national wealth? It increases. Why? Because productivity is going to increase, which increases the national wealth. And then debt to GDP, debt to assets, are going to, uh, as a percentage, are going to start to decrease. And that's how you become a wealthy nation. Okay, that's the way it works. Now, we can sit here and spend another two hours, and I can explain to you the private banking. I can explain to you uh, external sectoral balance, and I can do that. But I'm not going to do that. You have to reduce the amount of deficits and promote ecosystem feedback loops, which can include some uh, uh, taxing of the top 5%, definitely. But, but in the direction that we're going right now, with all these negative interest rates, okay, slowing economy and doing more of the same, this is definitely the first shockwave of a snap moment. The next snap that's going to come is we're going to all be sitting here instead of watching day after day, watching uh, yields go negative more and more and more. You're going to see inflation go up more and more and more and more. And then the economy is going to be slowing just like it's slowing now. And then the solution is going to be what? More deficits, more stimulus packages, lower rates and uh, uh, more QE. <laughs> Completely wrong thing. It's too late. You can't do that can't do that then so that's it guys uh, again if you guys are interested come down to learn real macroeconomics and investing at patreon.com slash real macro okay be smart keep it real keep it pure